Okay, so I figured we would talk a bit about your uh, self as a guitarist and your journey as a guitarist because a lot of people might be interested in something like that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the first time you heard like rock music, like guitar oriented music? Ooh, I don't know if I remember definitely, but I'm sure it would have been the Beatles because uh, when I was growing up, um, probably when I was about four or five is maybe the first time that I remember, or at least I think I remember paying attention to music. Um, but my mum has told me, I forget who it is now, but when she was pregnant with me, she went to some concert, maybe like Santana or something like that. Um, and I'm sure my parents were playing music when I was like just a little baby. Exactly. Yeah, my first, the first band that I remember actively liking was the Beatles. Mm. Did you have like instruments around the house? You mentioned that your parents listened to music when you were in. Um, my, my dad plays upright bass, um, but I think I would have been way too small to try and <laughs> play an upright bass. Um, but that was uh, a ukulele. Um, mm -hmm. And so I used to play the ukulele and actually that's how I ended up playing guitar is I broke the ukulele and we replaced it with the acoustic guitar. So that's <laughs> how it started. Yeah, it was like a compensation, you know, a small guitar got broke. So you got even bigger guitar. Yeah, in place of it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, was your parents like jazz musicians or what? Because of the upright bass, you know, did your dad play jazz or what did he play? Yeah, he played jazz. Um, he was a gigging musician most of his life, and now he teaches at a music school in Sydney. Okay, so you you didn't get like <laughs> your dad didn't show as a warning example to you how it's like to be a musician. You know, <laughs> it didn't scare you off because you saw the no, gigging, gigging um, life and <laughs> <laughs> at young age. No, I didn't. Um, and I think when I was started starting to think about like making music and maybe having a career in music I I mean I knew I that's not what I wanted to do like I didn't want to um I wanted to make music but I didn't really think about playing gigs um that only really happened once I'd been releasing music for a while um so it's even though like music and like a musician was in my childhood I didn't really think about it like oh that's something I can do just kind of still just happened randomly <laughs> well it was a good uh accident then we, we can say no complaints <laughs> yeah do you remember what in like rock music or whatever you know was the thing that brought you in you know what was the thing did you listen to guitar or um guitar and drums so actually when i was younger like maybe six or seven I bullied my parents into letting me get a drum set and played that for maybe one or two years, but it was kind of, it was too loud because we lived in an apartment um, and I never really got good. So that kind of came and went. And then I focused more on guitar. Um, but at the time I was like, I started to listen to Led Zeppelin and Cream. Um, and I remember being shown Yes when I was pretty young and loved that. And then as I started to get more into it, I would buy guitar magazines. And then I found like Dream Theater and Steve Vai and Joe Satriani. And then that's kind of, that was it. Did you ever come back to drums or, you know, what's that? It? That was sort of it. Uh, once I started to record music, it was awesome because I could program drums. So I could do all the stuff that I wish I was physically able to do. Um, and I could kind of create the sound without having to figure out how to get my stupid limbs to coordinate. Do you remember uh, the time when you started out playing who were like your main idols in guitar? Uh, definitely Steve Vai and Joe Satriani. A couple of the first CDs I bought were, um, they were called like an anthology of Steve Vai. It was like a greatest hit sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, that Joe Satriani, um, I think the first Dream Theater album I got was Octavarium when it came out, and then I kind of worked backwards and then stuck with them. Um, and then Ingve Malmsteen as well. Uh, I got all like all the G3 DVDs, and yeah, 
that's pretty uh, a, a sort of a hardcore introduction you know when you start start playing to start immediately you know listening to those <laughs> guys because you know granted there was Beatles and stuff like that but uh, they're still pretty hardcore stuff those guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you remember did you have like some bands when you were at school or did you just you know play in your bedroom um i had a few friends that i sort of had a band with and we would cover uh stuff like queens of the stone age mm. um uh, and it was one of those situations which i feel like a lot of people have where there were two guitarists and a drummer and we just found a friend and made them buy a bass mm. i feel like that's the classic band lineup and that's why there aren't many bass players that's... i guess you have a bass yeah i do i play main instrument is this bass but yeah i i have i've met a lot of people who you know uh wanted to be in a band but there was nothing left and bass that's actually how i started <laughs> i think <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah that's great um yeah. yeah so we used to play yeah queens of the stone age stuff like that and then with the guitarist in that uh band uh we would learn like mastodon and yeah. some of the and trivium and like some of the more complicated stuff um but i never played a gig or anything like that it was just yeah. like a jam with friends sort of thing okay you know, it's, it's also you know funny to hear all of these sort of interesting names because those are usually not the ones that people you know start with you know mastodon and joe satriani and, and stuff like that did, did you listen to any of the jazz stuff or was that like just something you knew from your childhood um I don't know if it was because I was a, a teenager or if it was my real opinion, but I thought jazz was really lame. Um, I don't know if it was just like to be annoying to my dad, but especially because I was into like Dream Theater and Lamb of God and all these bands where the drummer is like hitting the drum as hard as possible at all times. And then I'd hear jazz where the drummer at the time, I was kind of like, there's no groove here and they're just kind of like softly playing. Mm. Um, so I kind of just wrote off the entire genre <laughs> um as a younger person um and got more into metal and then the more like technical stuff um but definitely as I've gotten older I've gone back and been like wow Pat Metheny is amazing and yeah yeah. Well, yeah of course that's it's uh when you're like a guitar player and if you hate jazz there's always the possibility to get like a gateway rock because in jazz there are so many like great guitar players so even if yeah. you might be like a bit iffy on jazz you know you could admire <laughs> the guitar players you know so many like Mike Stern and you know Pat Metheny and people yeah, like exactly. that well do you uh, remember when you first started out how much did you practice versus now like do you practice as much as you did or has it like uh become less and less throughout the years um <clears throat> i don't remember ever practicing too much mm. um so learning i remember the first time i learned to play a minor scale across all six strings was because there was a lick in a trivium song that was just <laughs> like a minor scale played really fast from like top to bottom. Um, so I never really went through learning all the scales in different positions and stuff like that. Um, but from learning bits and pieces of songs, I guess that's how I picked up some technique and started to learn a bit of theory. Um, but I think the main thing that helped me with kind of learning the instrument was just recording, um, trying to come up with cool ideas and then not be able to play them well enough to record and then practicing it and then doing it over and over again. And that's sort of what I've done ever since. Like that's where I make most of my improvements is just trying to come up with cool stuff and then figure out how to play it and make it sound good. Mm, yeah. Uh, when was, you know, when would you say this sort of thing was at its <coughs> peak when you know, you knew you used to like uh, record and do like home studio stuff? Oh, it's kind of been ongoing for 10 or so years or maybe even longer. Um, when I was, so I probably started when I was like 15 or something like that. And it would be probably a weekend or school holiday sort of activity. Mm. Um, and then I went to university and it was still like a weekend or summer holiday sort of thing. And now that I'm like a professional musician, it's still Maybe it's even less now because I'm on tour or I'm doing interviews or being doing something like that. Uh, it's just like a, when I find time, I try to spend it making music. Mm. 
All right. What is your sort of general mindset when it comes to practicing? You know, uh, do you think it's do you think that people should learn theory or like play their favorite songs or you know or if, you know if you're like a, if you teach someone playing guitar, how would you kind of approach to you know uh, sort of give them the ability to you know have a mindset of practicing and doing that stuff? Um, I would probably ask them what they want to be able to do. Like if they think of themselves doing the thing that they find the most fun, what is it? Because uh, for some people it could be playing all your favorite songs and then you would figure out like what techniques do I need to develop in order to play this song to get it to that point. Um, for me, it's just I want to make uh, music and then as a I guess like a side product of that I play live so I have to figure out how to play it as well um, but so my way of learning guitar is to try and come up with music that's constantly different in some way so I have to figure out new ways to play chords uh, new ways to play scales I have to do all that stuff so that my own playing sounds interesting to me because if I don't improve in some way then I'll just be really bored with what comes out mm. um, so that's kind of how it works for me um, but then maybe someone their goal is to be the craziest guitarist ever and then it's like you get rock discipline and that sort of thing and just put in the hours mm. do you think it's possible for someone to be the best guitarist or you know because there are so many just awesome players these days yeah um I mean, there are definitely people that are more insane than others. Um, there's a guy from Sydney called Stephen Taranto, who's just, he can just move his fingers faster than most people can. Um, and Jason Richardson's like that and those sorts of players. It's just like, I don't think I would be capable of doing that even if I put in the time. Mm, but you know you don't have to because I, i think it's good to have different players you know not not everyone exactly yeah, to be, yeah a speed <laughs> demon that would be horrible <laughs> actually <laughs> so, yeah do you remember the uh, attitude of your parents when they kind of find out that you're like very serious about pursuing music and like recording and stuff um it was kind of okay because i was studying architecture um in university So music was always just the like passion, hobby thing. Um, and I guess having a dad who's a musician and a mom who loves music, it was kind of pretty easy to explain, like, I want to get a new guitar. Or, like, I want to spend time playing guitar. Like, I didn't have to convince them that it was mm. worthwhile. Um, and so I was studying something that was maybe a safer career. So there was also never like a question of, Uh, will you ever be able to make money from this or that sort of thing um, and while I was studying I started to release music and then it started to get popular and then I would, like I remember the first time I made a CD um, I made 50 copies and like it all sold and it was like more money than I could make at an architecture job <laughs> and that's when I was like oh maybe I can like try and scale this up somehow um, So I think because of the way I did it, there was never a point where I had to try and like convince them. Um, and also I didn't really buy gear as well. Um, I used my first job to save up for an Axe FX, but that's pretty much aside from my first guitar. That's like the only thing I bought. I wasn't like buying amps and pedals all the time. Um, so I guess I'm trying to think of the word, but I was very, um, I don't know what the word is, but like maybe like stoic or, or something when it comes to gear, or is that what you're trying to say? You know, you didn't get much gear and just I kind of kept I uh, kept it all quite like um, it all seemed like it was okay. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like I need to borrow a thousand dollars to mm, yeah. like go and record an album. I was just like figuring out how to do it myself and that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So it never, it probably never appeared risky. I yeah. guess maybe that's a good word. Yeah, you you never seemed like you're just uh, risking it all to become like a rock star and you know yeah. at the common dream. You know, yeah. So I think uh, two things that you know it's uh, interesting that you mentioned that you made more money from the CD than like architecture because usually people think it's the other way around. You know that you have to have like a proper job to get money and like not 
do CDs and music and stuff like that. It's funny to me because you know my my dad my dad is an architect, so you know uh, <laughs> I, I know you, you do you do get some job money from that also. But like it's it's yeah. so funny to hear it because as, especially these days, you know, you wouldn't make more money from CDs than you would from no. From... <laughs> but just looking at it for like a, I have a casual job. I can spend like eight hours mm. drawing toilets um, <laughs> and getting paid in cash, yeah. or I can like sell t-shirts on the internet i was just like wow maybe this works yeah yeah definitely <laughs> and more so these days it's actually the t-shirts so it works yeah. as an anal- analysis exactly. yeah. and also like when you mentioned that you were weren't like a like a gear hound you know getting all these battles and stuff like that it's actually very interesting because that seems to be the mindset of a lot of like modern players because of we have the technology to have like XFX and you know neural cortex and, and stuff like that so we don't necessarily even need to as a beginner player to think about all the gear that you need to get because you can just get like this you know save up money for something like you know XFX or whatever or like yeah apply plugin, plugins or whatever and there's your setup which is interesting because you used to be like that guitar players have like massive rigs and and stuff like that Yeah. Yeah. I think I came into guitar playing at a good time too, um, because I could get away with, um, like the first thing that I got was a boss multi effects pedal. Um, and it didn't have a cab sim, but it was kind of good enough. Like it had distortion and it had delay and effects, um, which was like a lot more inspiring to use than getting like a combo amp where you have a clean channel and like a kind of shit, crunch channel um so i kind of like my first experiences were already like i can get decent effects that are pretty cheap and then there was garage band and logic where everything's kind of comes for free um and yeah now the neural stuff there's no you don't really need to spend a lot of money to sound as good as anyone which is yep. awesome yeah uh, it's possible that something like that might show people that it's not the gear that you know is maybe the reason that you're not like progressing or whatever and <laughs> sort of puts the attention on like you know discipline and practice and songwriting or whatever at least you know you would think <laughs> that would be the case. <laughs> yeah. so uh how did it feel to you when your idol steve Vai praised you like a, you know this new amazing guitar player who's like innovating and stuff um I can't really remember, but I, it's kind of like the best. I can't think of a better, um, I guess it's the kind of thing that's just constantly motivating, um, just to have someone that you love say something nice. Yeah. Feels yeah. good. <laughs> you have it on printed as a fridge magnet on, on, on your fridge. Right? No, but I've, um, I've, I've used it in every single press release ever. So, um, It's that, that should do it. <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you start your press release with that, you know that that's kind of guarantee stuff. <laughs> well, the problem is now I've done another album since then, so it's going to get to a point where I can't just be like uh, Steve. I said this five albums ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to... to get yeah. You need to get someone new to say something. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to get um, like Brian May or something. <laughs> Yeah, you should get a hold of his agent, definitely. Yeah, I need a quote. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, did you ever actually meet Vias, like in person? You know, like not not a show or anything, but did you like go and see him in person? Yeah, the first time that I went uh, to the Nam show in California, like oh, a yeah. big trade show. Um, actually, so someone that was uh, doing like the online advertising for Steve Vai at the time came across my music and reached out to me and we kind of started talking. And so when I went to that NAMM show, I met him and he uh, really amazingly organized us to visit Steve I at his studio. Um, so I got to meet him in his studio and I was like a little kid, just like, oh, hello. <laughs> um, and he was so nice. Like I'm sure he knew exactly what was going on in my head like mm. this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and he like played a song he was working on and we kind of hung out for a little bit. Um, so I had, I think that was before. Um, so I think when I finished the album, I probably sent it to him. Um, and he was generous enough to say something nice. 
Very cool. You know, not 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 a lot of people obviously get that sort of uh, sort of privilege to you know have someone, and it's so nice when somebody does that. You know, that they take the time to you know talk to you and yeah. sort of appreciate what you're doing. So it was great. I think um that whole that whole kind of generation of musicians seem mm-hmm. to be getting more and more kind of generous like that like i noticed yeah. him and john petrucci and joe satriani mm-hmm. and like kind of everyone in dream theater constantly talking about upcoming artists that they're listening to and kind of hanging out with them it's kind of yeah it's really cool yeah definitely you know a band like hey can you know definitely got a lot of stuff from like dream theater shouting out you know and like mike portland yeah. playing with them and, and stuff like that so exactly very yeah cool. very cool yeah yeah uh I read that once in an interview, so you said that uh, it was like 2018 in like a Guitar World video. You said that you used to listen to a lot of punk and metal. So what what would you view like was the influence of punk and metal in your songwriting? Because a lot of your stuff is like very rock and jazz oriented, you would say. So maybe not that punky or, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, probably the chord progressions. Like a lot of my music is still super simple chord progressions which I would have got from like Blink-182 and Green Day and like that sort of stuff. Um, I guess it doesn't come out in the style because I don't have like the classic punk drum beats. <laughs> Although I was listening to, um, oh, what was the band? Not, uh, it's a band called Strike Anywhere um, mm. that I think I probably found on like a Tony Hawk soundtrack. <laughs> um, Legender. Yeah. And I just, I really want to, you know, like the classic punk where you like palm it and then open it up and open it up. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, yeah. I want to kind of somehow put that into a song. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, it would be interesting. Not a lot of uh, punk jazz out there these days, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it would be awesome to see, you know, like, you know, pop punk used to be the, the music of, you know, the previous sort of generations in like Tony Hawk stuff. It'd be very cool to see like a new skating game and have like Pliny there and like David Max and <laughs> Biggie or, you know, whatever. Yeah. There. It'd be super cool. Yeah. So uh, going back a bit, you, you, you know, you already mentioned that you used to hate jazz, you know, quote unquote, but do you remember <laughs> what were the sort of, when you started to listen to jazz, did you consciously think about putting it in your music did you love it so much that you sort of had the flair because you know your, your newer stuff especially has a lot of jazz in it like you know the sunhead ep especially i think is very jazz inspired compared to your debut album which is you know has a lot a lot of things going on so how did the process go like you know making a bit more jazzier sort of things in your music um it wasn't that deliberate but i think it's probably inevitable for um anyone that's trying to keep evolving in music is you just kind of end up with jazz because mm-hmm. i think <laughs> at least now like jazz seems to be the most developed genre in terms of what goes into it with theory and harmony and everything mm-hmm. um and so i started to listen to more like pat metheny and a bit of bill frizzell um and then i found like tigger and hamasian oh, and yeah. I guess that's like the perfect introduction to jazz for someone that loves Mashuga. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. And but a lot of like really crazy harmony. Uh, and there's another guitarist called Tim Miller um, mm. who played on the song Sunhead, and that song was very inspired by the music he makes, which has a lot of like super interesting harmony. Um, so just the more that I write, um, and I. Like if I default to using the pop punk chords and then I'm like, how can I make this more interesting? It's kind of the only place to borrow from is jazz. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it's, it's kind of inevitable. Yeah, definitely. And so nice of you to mention, you know, Tigran, he's such a great guy, you know, and I spoke with him like a year ago, did an interview, such a humble, amazing guy. It would be fun to see um, you guys work together because he did something with Tozin Abasi in, in yeah. the circus. So. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it'll happen. I've never oh, talked yeah. to him or anything, but I feel like it's, should. <laughs> we'll yeah. have to make it happen. I also love, um, have you, do you follow him on Instagram? Yeah, I do. Yeah. 
he does these promo videos for his upcoming tour dates, but he's just like walking down the street and he's holding his phone like here. So it's just all chin. And oh, he's yeah, like yeah. whispering, like, yeah. come to the show. <laughs> so good. The, the only way you can do it in jazz, you know, you don't have any like <laughs> edited videos or something. Yeah, there's no like tickets <laughs> here. and like Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's awesome. But yeah, it's, it's sad because he isn't coming to Finland. So I haven't depressed myself watching those. So <laughs> right. I, I would wait, wait for him to come to Finland. But also something that you mentioned is it's it's true that usually when you kind of want to spice things up, you know, you take something from jazz, which is very interesting because uh, going back even like 20 years or so, jazz wasn't this like hyper intell- intellectual, you know, music. It was like at, at the time it was viewed, of course, as like a you know lower form of music compared to like classical music or whatever. But now it has become this like academized like intellectual sort of music it's very interesting and do you think that would happen in the future with rock and metal that they become sort of accepted to like an academic setting you know where you teach like metal and rock because that isn't happening a lot right now yeah um i guess it it could uh i wouldn't really know i guess the other thing not that this is necessarily that related uh but just talking about like trying to make music more interesting another one that me and a lot of people that I'm friends with are starting to pull from as well as electronic music. Yeah. Um, Cause I guess in the past, like rock and metal, as far as the production goes, it would be like two guitars, bass drums, and maybe like some extra layers. Uh, but some of the electronic stuff that's happening now, that's so like full of just stuff happening constantly. That's kind of the way to make like the prog metal stuff sound more interesting is some of that like I guess production ideas yeah that's true and I guess that's something that's going on like uh, you know if you you obviously might know like Adam Neely and you know his yeah. Sun, Sun Gazer project is a good example of that and also you exactly. fe- you featured you know the, it escapes my mind who it was but on Sunhead EB you know you featured the electronic producer who did the solo on what, Anomaly yeah 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 definitely yeah 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 so it that's true you know a lot of electronic stuff is seems to be like merging with rock and metal which is interesting yeah and i think that's kind of happening with all genres i think yeah like every genre like as it gets kind of it almost becomes a stereotype so everyone's like what can i pull in here to make it sound new so everyone's doing it and like mainstream pop is kind of getting a bit of punk now and like yeah hip-hop's getting a bit of punk um so everyone's just like trying to find something else and we're all borrowing from each other and i guess maybe genres will die eventually we'll see yeah we'll, we might see that and something that's interesting is like jazz is getting a bit more popular with musicians and internet but i haven't seen it yet in like pop culture you know there's not a lot of jazz and on vogue so to speak so yeah it would be great to see that you know t Run b on yeah. like a television show on <laughs> yeah. or yourself yeah uh well we've been speaking a lot about guitarists and it's no secret that you know today there's so many people to look up to and like internet has certainly gave us like the many people so where do you think the sort of instrument is going in the future now um well i think everyone's getting ridiculously good um it seems like there isn't much that can't be done at this point Mm uh but then someone like tosin bringing like the whole thump thing into it um like i never would have thought of that until i heard it and now that's kind of becoming more common and more popular um so maybe someone will come along and invent something new um but otherwise i think people are just going to get so ridiculously good at playing literally anything they can think of that it'll be up to writing music that's captivating um so you can show off your skills because otherwise i mean you kind of already know like ingve in the 80s was kind of almost the maximum of what you can do on a guitar it's like all <laughs> the classical the hardest classical violin techniques yeah just yeah, and yeah. Some, someone like Jason Becker, I think, would have even done more if, you know, he hadn't had his illness and stuff like that. So that's yeah. definitely true. 80s were different when it comes to guitar. So, well, what, what in guitar inspires you right now? 
Um, I don't know. I haven't really played much lately. Um, I think when I start to write more new music, I'm going to focus more on different tones. Um, like I have, a, I've always had guitars with humbuckers, but now I have a few that have single coils. So I'm going to start to explore more of the like kind of conventional rock tones. And I guess this is kind of all the same as what I've been saying about trying to find things from other places to bring into the music. Um, so I've kind of, I've just been making like happy prog metal guitar music the whole time, but now I'm going to do it with a rock tone or like the, a fuzz tone or something like that. Oh, and then, yeah. yeah. So but, yeah, exploring yeah. those different sounds. Um, I'll keep trying to find new things to do with harmony. Um, the more I get comfortable with uh, crazier harmonies, the more I kind of feel like you can do anything you want and it, you can make it work. Mm. Um, so some, some ugly chords and some classic rock tones. <laughs> Very good. Very nice. That's good because... Uh, I, I'm getting a, maybe a bit tired of like the, I don't know how to call it, but this like certain tone in guitar right now, the sort of very, mm. very, very clean, like modern guitar, Strandberg, like uh, Abasi sort of guitar tone, you know, very, it's very distinct and it's getting a yeah. bit tired. I would like to hear a bit more uh, dirt in, in rock yeah, music. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're kind of running out of time, I guess. So, and I've, I've had enough questions. I would uh, like to thank you for your time. It's very gracious of you, you know, to speak with me. That's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to visit Helsinki. It'll be the first time. Um, and obviously, Neural DSP is there. We get to be there for a few oh, days. Awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be really fun. Very good. I, I met Doug when we did like an interview of the uh, Quad Cortex thing. He, he's, he's a nice dude. And of course, everyone at Neural is a is a good person so yeah yeah and that's yeah, gonna be awesome yeah definitely waiting to see you because you know i remember 10 years ago you know hearing some of the first eps and being like you know yeah this is oh, this awesome is great new stuff you know being and i know a lot of people in finland who have been following you as well you know for a long time so it's definitely going to be a great show yeah it should be great because there's not um there's not many places that we go for a first time anymore um, oh yeah yeah it's that's kind of definitely. it's hard to find places that we can go but it's also the first time um so it's really exciting yeah, yeah it's it's great that you get to cross off finland in the list Very good. yeah yeah thank you so much sir and i hope you have a good day you know you too yeah thank yeah you. i'll see you see you in a few weeks yeah see you definitely goodbye and thank you cheers cheers <laughs>